Hi guys, welcome to Sunday at Salt. It's great to be with you again. I hope you had a great week. Hey, just want to encourage you, if you didn't see the message last week, I did a message called Roadmap to Jesus. And it's really a beautiful story about how we need to just really encounter Jesus in this time in our life. Just a couple of announcements for us. We've got church going back in person on the 5th of December. So put that in your diary, get ready and come back. It'd be awesome to see you in person. And if you're not in a small group at the moment, I want to encourage you to grab some people, get into a small group, because that's how we encourage people. That's how we're the body of Christ in this time. And hey, if you haven't checked out our new wellness farm video, go onto our YouTube channel or go onto Facebook. It's an amazing video and share it with your friends. If you know people that would benefit from listening to it, share it with others. Hey, we've got a great lineup today. We've got Meg preaching. We've got Bethel giving the worship. So just sit back, relax, and allow Jesus to really touch your heart today. God bless you. Have a great day. Oh
Hello, great to be with you all again. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I just want to encourage you before I speak to, if you haven't already watched Pete's message from last week, which is the roadmap to Jesus, really want to encourage you to go and watch that. Um, my message is going to dovetail into that and it's got a great clip out of The Chosen in it as well that's just fantastic and really applicable to both messages. But today, as I start, I just wanted to get a little bit vulnerable with you and talk about how difficult it is right now to navigate some of the scary things that are going on around all of us. And um, I'm wondering how everybody else is going with that. It is tricky to navigate some of the things we are encountering on a daily basis. Um, and one of the hardest things for me to navigate personally is the impact of the current crisis and what it has on us as friends and families and uh, neighbours and just regular Aussies who are used to our laid back, easygoing lifestyle where we don't have a whole bunch of things out of the ordinary to be worried about, just day to day life things. But, you know, this is all out of the ordinary. This is all unprecedented. And we are all in the middle of what feels like a fire. It's like the heat has been turned up and that's when it becomes really evident where the cracks are um, and where the fault lines are. So if you fire a pot in a kiln at a high temperature, it actually reveals where the flaws are in the pot. It reveals where the cracks are. And, and I feel like the fire that we are in right now is revealing our own fault lines and our own cracks and the own, our areas of brokenness that we have not yet been in a position to recognize and deal with. But now we are, here we are in the middle of the heat. And I remember hearing um, a, a minister speak from the UK and he was talking about his leadership training and he said before he ever puts anyone in a position of leadership if he hasn't been able to witness those very same people in a heated up battle in a difficult place he'll actually deliberately light a fire underneath them to see how they, they respond in traumatic in difficult in heated up situations how do we respond and he obviously doesn't put people in leadership who respond badly because they are revealing they have not yet done the work within their lives, the work within their hearts to be able to respond well, even in the midst of the heat. And at the moment, I feel like that heat is actually revealing a lot in all of us. And it's where the rubber hits the road. And it's where our relationship with Jesus goes from theory and the things that we've learnt about and the things that we've maybe applied on a moderate level and it actually becomes the reality of are we actually a disciple of Jesus? Are we a follower of Christ? Am I simply a Christian by name only? Or am I truly living out the truth of what it means to be a follower of Jesus in my everyday life? See, Jesus gave us some kingdom mandates too. He gave us kingdom mandates. And uh, I just want to read to you that one of the king, well, actually two of the kingdom mandates that he claimed were the greatest of all the commandments, of all the mandates. And it's from Matthew chapter 22. If you have a Bible, I'd love you to turn to it. Matthew chapter 22 from verse 37 to 40. Love the Lord your, we got a lot of bird song with us at the moment, which is amazing too. <laughs> Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. In other words, love him with everything that you've got. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. It's pretty big, isn't it? 
These are the kingdom mandates he's called us to live by. And I just wonder how are we doing in living out these mandates? In a highly polarized community, who is worthy of our love and who is not? Who are we struggling to love right now? Who are we simply unable to love right now? And does Jesus really call them my neighbor? Does he mean every neighbor? Is he talking about me loving every person I happen to be doing life alongside of? I believe he does. See, something happens though at the very beginning of this mandate where he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Love him with everything. Something happens in that space of devoting our lives to loving God where he actually comes in and changes our DNA from the inside out. There's this beautiful reciprocal exchange and relationship that happens as I devote and dedicate my life, not just to studying his word, but to loving him. He doesn't say in this commandment, study the word with all your heart and mind and soul. He says, love the Lord your God with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your mind. And the word points to him. But if it's, if it's not, if, if we're not using it to point to him, then it's theory only. So in that beautiful space of loving him, he actually uh, offers us the gift of the Holy Spirit and we get to welcome the Holy Spirit to come on inside of us and change our DNA. He actually changes our DNA so that we are permanently stamped with the kingdom. He alters us from the inside out so that we start to look and taste like Jesus. That we start to live like him. But it only happens when we spend time with him. It's only possible to love my neighbor as I love myself if I'm spending time with God, if I'm spending time in his presence, if I'm allowing him and welcome him, him in to change me from the inside out. So I want to ask you today, who are the influencers in your life? Does the TV influence you? Do the movies you watch influence you more than God does? Does what you're listening to or watching or the people with the loudest voices in your world, do they influence you more than what God does? Who are the major influences in your life? And I want to ask you this question too. Who is welcome around your table? See, this is a really good test of how we're doing. This is how I test how I'm doing. Who's welcome around my table? Is it just the people that look and think like me? Is it the people that have all the same values as me? And what are the obstacles that prevent me from loving my neighbor as I love myself? Who am I opening my door to? Who am I allowing into my sphere? Who am I doing life alongside of? Who am I loving well? And, and who am I not? And why am I not? What are the obstacles? Are the obstacles my judgment of those people? That person? Is one of the obstacles offence? Offence at how they live, offence at how they've behaved, offence at what they've maybe said to me or done to me. Is that my obstacle? Is it jealousy of who they are and what they have? Is it my own personal comfort? I just, you know, 
just don't like hanging out with people that are different to me because I want the whole world to be like me. You know, it's easy to get in that place and get complacent. And we've, when we do, we've lost our way. So Jesus actually addresses all these things. In the roadmap to Jesus that Pete spoke about last week, he talked about all the characteristics in Matthew chapter 5 that Jesus identified were kingdom characteristics. These are the places and the people groups where you'll find Jesus. This is where he resides. And he first describes the characteristics as the poor in spirit and those who mourn and the merciful and the meek and those who hunger and thirst for his righteousness, those who are pure in heart, the peacemakers, the persecuted. Nowhere on that list is the self-righteous or the self-seeking or the people that think they have it all together and they know everything and everybody else is wrong except them. Nowhere on that list does it define those characteristics. See, these are the characteristics that he forms in us when he comes and lives on the inside of us when we actually have to walk through some of the difficulties of life and he says, I want you to be a peacemaker in this situation. I want you to be merciful in this situation. When you mourn, when you grieve, I am right there with you. I want you to seek justice and I want you to seek righteousness. And most of all, I want you to be meek because it's the meek that inherit the earth. And he tells us, he addresses the obstacles we may have as he goes on in Matthew chapter 5 and chapter 6 and chapter 7. His Sermon on the Mount continues. And everything he says is difficult. It's difficult. It's actually impossible to achieve except if I am loving him with all my heart and mind and strength and allowing him to move through me. And he tells us, in, in Matthew chapter 5, you've got no right to judge another human being. No right. That's his job alone. When we judge others, we're eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And he, he actually forbade that right back in the garden. That's his alone. And instead, he invites us to eat from the tree of life and to leave judgment up to him. And then he actually addresses the areas where we may find we are in offense at others. And he's so harsh with this one because in, in Matthew chapter uh, six, I think it is, he says, he, no, it's Matthew chapter five, 43 to 47. And he calls us to forgive those who sin against us. He says, you've heard it said, to love your neighbor but I'm actually saying love your enemy love your enemy and pray for those who hurt you this is what will define you as a believer this is what will set you apart this is what gives you your salt and gives you your light when you refuse to judge when you refuse to harbor offense when we choose to forgive as if my own forgiveness depends on it See, this is what defines us as different to the world. We're supposed to be different. We're supposed to taste like salt. We're supposed to be able to be surrounded in darkness and radiate the light of Jesus himself into the world around us. We don't do that by conforming. We don't do that by doing what everybody else does and, and harboring things and allowing things within our lives that everybody else thinks is okay and valid they're not. He's, he's clearly saying here, these are the characteristics I want you to have that will define you as my followers. You are called to be salt and you are called to be light. And I just want to say that if you're struggling with that right now, because I know I am in some areas, then our only answer is to press in more to a loving God with all that we've got 
And as we do that, we give him access to change our hearts and to be the biggest and greatest influencer in our world. If we let him in, he will lead us to a genuine place of repentance. And if we ask him to flood us with his whole self and all of his unconditional love, the only place that we can do this is on our knees before him. See, these are the Matthew 22 mandates of Jesus himself. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. And the second is just like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Thanks, guys. I want to pray for us before I go. Lord, I just thank you for your goodness and your love, your unconditional love that washes over us. And right now we invite you in. We repent, we lay down the areas where we're struggling right now, whatever they may be. And we invite your Holy Spirit in to come and do his work on the inside of us. We surrender our hearts before you. We want to shine you. We want to taste like you. We want to bring you to our hurting community. Lord, would you come and heal us so that we can. In Jesus' name, amen. Discussion questions. Question number one. Who are the biggest influences in my life? Two. Do those influences point me to God as my source for life? Three. How does loving God cause my heart to change? <laughs>